the reason I'm telling this big long story is because I'm going to use some examples in these videos this week about things that worked really well uh, during the showcasing process that I think that you can continue to use even if uh, you're not in a showcasing environment. Something that the actors started doing for uh, the showcase pr uh, presentation nights was they would do Google image searches of the people who were on the RSVP list because we would share with them not anybody's contact information because that that's private but if the casting directors agents managers producers showrunners writers network execs whatever told us they were coming we would let the actors know here's who's coming a day ahead of time or earlier in the day of that showcase so they could spend the day splitting up that list and doing Google image searches and knowing what everybody looked like. So they, we actually walked into the green room for one of the showcases somewhere mid, midway through. And in the green room, there were these poster boards plastered all over the place with the photographs from like Facebook and, and anywhere that they could find using a Google image search of these people who were going to be in attendance at the showcase. Because during the networking portion, it was really important for actors who were going to be in a very crowded space with a lot of other people to know, ah, there's my primary target and make sure they spend their time well. It's not creepy. It's not stalkery. It's that's someone that I need to make sure I have a little bit of face time with. And even if it's just a, hey, thank you so much for coming and then walk away and let them stop you and say, hey, wait, you were really fantastic. And of course, you know that they need to think you're really fantastic because the whole reason you're targeting them is because you've done this research on what show you need to be on. And you know that this person is a direct link, whether they are the agent that gets you to the casting office, that gets you to the job, or it's the casting, someone in that casting office, or someone in the production, uh, uh, production group of the project that you want to be a part of you know that this is someone, because you've done this research, that needs to know you exist because you solve a problem they have regularly. And then when you have FaceTime with them after they've seen your work and say, hey, thanks for being here, they want you to stick around and chat with them to make sure you're not a whacker, to make sure you are cool and not just the wacky character that maybe you play or the creepy bad guy that you play or the flake that you play, but that you absolutely have a guy behind the curtain and you have business savvy. And knowing who that person is, because you've done a Google image search, is a very powerful ninja move. And it's something I recommend even if you're not showcasing, but going to a networking event or uh, attending uh, anything like at a SAG Foundation or going to a tweet up, anywhere where you're going to potentially have FaceTime with a potential buyer, especially someone that you've targeted and know needs to know you exist. Uh, being really sure that you know who that person is, is a ninja move. Also, if you get invited into that casting office, knowing what each of the players in that office looks like so that when you get there and sign in and you see the person you sign in with and you realize, ah, yes, that's the casting assistant or that's the casting director sitting there running sign in, acting like, I don't know who she is. Well, I'm not going to come in and say, Debbie Zane, hi, what are you doing signing people in? But I'm going to know that's Debbie Zane and I'm going to be my most confident, best, most ninja self as I say hello completely professional, treating the assistant as an important part of this process because she is, no matter who she is. And then you're going to get the bonus of her saying, wow, that's a, a real pro right there because she didn't treat my staff, my interns, my uh, my helpers for the, day, for the day as any less important to this process than she did the executive who happens to be sitting in on pre-reads. Really important stuff, guys. Um, I want you to also come up with a way to keep your show Bible updated on a regular basis. Um, I know this can be challenging for a lot of folks because it's like, oh, the information's just overwhelming. It's coming in through Google Alerts regularly and, and I don't know how to stay on top of this. Again, it's part of the reason that I ask you to start small with your target list because if you get too ambitious and say, I can do a target list of 10 or even six, you're gonna start feeling underwater very quickly because of the amount of information that's out there. So if instead you start with a target of one or two, and then as you get confident and as your muscle gets stronger for this, you can expand it to your next target and your next target. And, and I really hope it's becoming evident now why I suggested you take it slow. So um, I recommend if you use iCal or any you know Google, Google Calendar or whatever sort of um, time management software you use for running your life and keeping up with your appointments, set an alarm once a week, once a week or every 10 days, 
to uh, go through and get all your Google Alerts uh, information, to uh, to get all your show Bible information updated. If you've been squirreling away notes, if you've been meeting people and keeping business cards tucked away in a folder somewhere once a week to 10 days, go and visit that file and get everybody entered into your database. Go and visit those emails that have been coming in filtered to your uh, Google Alert filter or label in your email account and get that information entered into your database because the w the reason it feels overwhelming is because we let it go for too long and then it's just this task of oh my god so what i suggest with your um show bible is to have a strong relationship with it you keep it updated as regularly as possible certainly no d don't let it go for more than a month without updating it no matter what market you're in because you're getting new information more often than you think and and you really owe yourself the favor of keeping that updated when he gets notification that there's this event going on he's there and it's very low attendance as events like this go and he gets lots of FaceTime with these guys and he has already started a relationship with one of these guys from years ago and it's a, great to see you again how you been what you got what you've been working on oh tell me about your latest project and it's colleagues having a conversation about the cool things that they've got going on rather than I'm an actor and I need something that you've got because I know a breakdown will be coming out in 2012 and I really want you to consider me it's bullshit it's not about that it's that a whole bunch of other actors on that same night may have chosen to go out with each other or, you know, go to a holiday party. It's, you know, the holidays, people are going out, um, connecting with each other or, or, you know, staying home watching TV or sitting around on Facebook complaining or whatever. But there's this, do you get in the car? Do you head across town? Do you spend hours especially in a place like L.A., dealing with traffic, uh, to have a little bit of FaceTime with some, some people who you know you're going to be in business with for a, a nice long time. Yeah, you do, especially because a big chunk of your competition, they're flakes, a uh, big chunk of your competition will not show up. And so a lot of times you get the edge just by showing up and having that FaceTime. And it's something that is a very big ninja move because so few people take advantage of, of mapping things out at that level. And you may look at it and go, but uh, yeah, but I'm not going to get a direct result. Well, how many times do you walk into a casting director workshop, see a casting assistant or associate, spend 40 to 45 bucks, get to read for, what, seven minutes? And I'm being generous on a cold read scene with a partner who can't act his way out of a paper bag, wet paper bag at that. And then you leave there feeling like, man, I totally didn't even get seen doing what I what I'm really, really great at. And the feedback I got was just kind of lukewarm because it really wasn't me on brand. And but then you feel like that has somehow been better use of your time because you got to act in front of the guy. Listen, getting to act in front of the buyers is almost irrelevant compared to having colleague to colleague FaceTime that shows that you're a non wactor that you're in this for the long haul, uh, that you're you're not only the big head, but you're the guy behind the curtain, uh, and that you understand that your relationship is going to exist for decades. And you solve a problem that they have, so being on their radar is a great idea. All right, this is a nice long vid. More to come. Mwah.